All right. You guys can chat if you wish. I just figured I would live webcast while I'm working on some stuff and answer any questions that you have. This is Ant Minor Repair. Welcome to the channel. Um, hopefully I can answer some questions like about what I'm using, what I'm doing, why I'm doing. And right today I'm working on an S17 Pro board. Uh, actually I was just checking out an overheating issue and when I went to take the heat sink off the chip it pulled the chip and uh, of course to replace that I needed to clear some area around there so I ended up pulling out six chips so I'm going to put them back um, mostly today so if you want to you can chat okay here goes and buy myself some microphone cable. Alright, I haven't been on for a while, so YouTube's probably not going to uh, push me as much, but I don't care. I just figure I'll record it and do that. So I might switch. That would be nice to switch views. I wonder if I can live. Always like the uh, microscope microscope view better well, let me put it out front name filters properties kind of doing this live but on that one let me get it back hang on just a second I see turn off the microscope put this view this view up this view larger. Now if I could just figure out how to assign the views. I don't think so. I'm going to be backwards, guys. Alright, we'll just do this way. So turn back on overhead. And microscope and put it back in its right place. I'll just switch in between them. It's kind of a pain to switch in between them though while you're working. And I just want to work today. Alright. Maybe that looks a little better. We'll try that. You can see my microscope in the upper left hand, and here I am. So hopefully that's big enough. I have no idea the resolution this dude's pushing out. So, all right. So today I'm working on preparing this pad. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here. I'm preparing this pad, but actually this pad had an issue, so I had to put some new solder resist on. Right? Hold on. Got a little bearing problem here. So if you look right here. I actually had to, um, this was solid solder all the way to the pad right here. And um, you can't have that when you're trying to place the chip because all the solder will then flow into the pad and you can't get a connection with the chip. So you have to stop it. So I take, um, basically I take my flat edge X-Acto knife that looks, basically that's the blade. And I just clean that off on the top and I make sure it's clean, um, basically. Hey, Javier, it's been a long time. Thank you. I'm just, just working. Just working today for a little while. I don't even know how long I'm going to do this. It's like, I haven't had a chance to make videos, so I've been really busy at work. So, anyway, so I put, I put, um, I put solder resist right there to keep it off. And I did this on the next chip, too. Um, I probably missed a little bit on the next chip. So I'm a little concerned about my job here is because some of the paint's lopped over, but I'm going to try it. So if you look right here, I got it in the bridge, but it kind of filled up this gap. So you want to be careful. You don't want the paint to be higher than the actual um, actual points because the chip needs to lay down flat. So um, what I might do, and sometimes you need to do this, it rips off the solder resist. I don't have to do this again, but I'm just going to make sure to top that off at that level. Make sure my knife is happy about that it looks like it 
Don't need to dig it out, but it can't be taller. So. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So. <sighs> All right, so I'll be putting this chip on later. Um, however, I wanted to get those ready. Um, this guy I need to, I'm going to zoom out here. This guy, I don't work on S17 Pros that much, so, you know, some boards you have to put, leave the heat sinks on when you put the chip on, some you don't. So this guy I need to clean up, so I'm going to start up my soldering iron, put it about 412. Okay, I'm going to let that soldering iron warm up. I really want to tin these legs and make sure they're tinned properly properly. <laughs> I didn't know that, Javier. Thank you very much. It's just been a while. I, I uh, got a promotion at work, and of course that means more responsibility, which means less time. So um, I still do a lot of work in my off time. It relieves my stress. So um, thank you very much. Don't like the price of Bitcoin right now. It's like 28.5, but hey, keep working. You know, keep working for the long term, so. All right. So I use this. Let me get my thing untangled. I use this. Uh, I don't know if you can see this tip. I'll lay it on here just a sec. Making a mess. Yeah. Oh, gee, that's the wrong tip. No wonder I won't use that tip. Just a second. Got to change tips. That was when I was cleaning stuff off. I have a chisel tip that holds a lot of heat that cleans off the base because I've cleaned off this base before. But uh, Let me change tips. So before I put this on, maybe I can show you. Maybe not. This, maybe it's better it's on. Hang on. All right. Let's get that turned on. Not too much on my desk these days. All right, so this tip is the one I use, and it has, it's, it's kind of like has a flat spot on either side. One side's even more flat. I use that tip, and I'll throw some solder on that, and I just run it along. And I want to make sure I have plenty of, plenty of uh, flux on here. It's a pain in the butt. I, I used to have problems. I used to struggle with this. I'd always get it, but I'd, I'd struggle. Sometimes I'd be running my tip along. I come over here and leave a big blob of solder on here, and you got to be careful. You can't just cut it off. Um, if it's if it's connected to a pin, you'll you'll pull a pin, you'll pull a, a lead out. So um, lately, I've been doing this. So I'm going to put some solder on here on my flat spot. I rotate the iron until I find that flat spot. throw some solder on there and then I just kind of drive along here. This S17 it always causes problems here so I just kind of tap it here and get some solder there. And I drive it along here and it has some problem there because there's double leads going out the ground right there. So I usually have to throw some more flux in there until it's right and not shorted. That looks about right. Let's clean that off and we'll inspect it. Yeah, Javier, thank you. Hey, hey, um, I appreciate it. Take care. All right. So let's have a clean look at this dude. I'm going to wash her off. Make sure I don't have any shorts. Geez, I had a big clump of solder there. Where'd that come from? Oh well, it's off the board now. Let's see here. This looks pretty good. Pretty good to put a chip on. The way I can tell if I kind of want to put a chip on this is I actually kind of look at it sideways. I pick it up. Just kind of make sure there's enough sticking. Sometimes um, this one looks okay. Sometimes um, what you'll see, let me get my tweezers so I can point at it. Sometimes what you're going to see, I'll make sure I'm even looking at the right one. Yeah, I'm on the right one. So what you'll see, I, I'm not worried about this. This will melt. 
This looks pretty uniform, which is nice. The only problem with these dudes sticking up is when you're trying to slide the chip around and position it to put it on. These guys catch the chip chip legs that have been tinned. Okay, but these have a lot of solder. But sometimes you'll actually see these are don't shine back at you and they're flat. That means there's probably not enough solder on it. So um, you might want to think about retinning them. So, um, hey, tech in, great. Thanks for uh, checking in there. So. Used to run about 14, 15 viewers doing this, but I really didn't announce this. So I just threw it on our Discord channel for Ant Minor Repair and did that. All right, so let's see, where am I at? I'm going to turn the board around so I can work with it. So, so this guy's kind of ready to try again. Now, now, for the record, I did try this once and I had a failure. Um, on the S17 Pro, on the S17 Pluses, I take the heat sink off because you have to get that board really hot. But um, I put the heat sink back on that dude for this because I think like a T17, the way I do it, um, I use, I use, um, I use the heat sink to help heat up. I'm going to have to straighten that dude out too. I'll oh, be in the next chip. I think that's the next, yeah, that's the next chip. This guy looks pretty good. You know, Looking at it, I'd worry a little bit about that. Do you see how flat those are? They're almost looking like they're laid down, but we, we already looked. They are sticking up some, so I'm, I'm pretty good with how I've tinned this. I did um, already remove solder. Can you see the kind of green stuff on here and green stuff there? Um, usually before I put a chip on, I'll try to take my flat edge knife and just kind of smooth stuff out. If I can, just kind of scrape what I can off. Not too deep, just just... It might be oxidized solder, or it's it's something. It's in my solder or my flux. And I'll clean it off again. All right. All right. Looks pretty good. Let's. Uh, so I'm gonna dry this off. Good. Used alcohol. And I have some. This was a bin one board, and I actually saved the chips that came off. Now I've retinned these. You notice um, I actually cleaned the old solder off, and I retinned them. And if you go down the legs, you kind of see the how nice they stick out there. Um, same thing. I always kind of check these to make sure there's no shorts. And typically, you know, I've been replacing like sometimes ten chips a day in an evening, so. Getting pretty good at this now, or pretty consistent. Let's say not good, but consistent. All right. So what I do next is I'm going to um, I'm going to tint. I'm going to put a little flux. Oh, the green stuff's already come back. Must be some sort of oxidation, I figure. So I'm going to just put a very small amount of flux on the legs here. If you put too much, the flux will get under, perhaps boil and throw the chip off. So I really try to minimize. That's quite a lot actually. I'm going to throw some over there. That's a lot of flux, but let's try it. It might kick it off. That's what I had happen last time. All right, so I make sure I'm putting my chip chip on right and I'm just going to basically get it right here. I'll set it on there. Okay. Now let me clean my tweezers here. Okay. So I look for a couple things when I'm setting this. I, I don't move the chip until it's actually set. So I'm, my method is to put it on right. I don't, you see a lot of people replacing chips and they're moving them around. I just can't get stuff that hot um, in my setup. So I'm just, basically I'm gonna center this dude. Kind of takes a steady hand. Um, and then you can't see this, but I'm looking for a reflection of the light to make sure I'm kind of showing both legs the same way. I see the same reflection of them. I use a lot of reflected light to know. Okay, that's about in the middle. So that guy's sitting there, sitting on some legs of flux. Um, hopefully not too much. Let's, let's go down and see how we're... Uh, this guy's got some overhang on that end. I'm looking right up here to make sure that it that the top of the chip isn't passed. I'm just trying to generally center it. It'll it will find its way. And then this guy. So so I'm not real happy with this guy right now because the edge of the chip goes right by it. So I've got this chip too high, basically on both these. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it down some. So we'll reposition it until I'm happy with how this goes. So. I'm going to try to, hopefully if those things don't catch, I can just move it down slightly. Maybe a little more. 
Okay, let's take a look at that now. Hold on, I'll get it. See, so, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of looking at this white line down here, making sure it's it's parallel, the edge of the chip. So I like that, and I like that. Let's pay attention to this side because it could still be cockeyed. This this seems a little cockeyed right now, um, but I think it's probably okay. And as far as my reflection goes, it looks like I'm fairly centered in the chip. So. And you guys that are watching live, um, I'll check the chat once in a while. You're more than welcome to ask questions. Um, I'll try to explain them, especially coming up because I'm going to throw this guy on a hot plate. It's going to take a while. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this right now. I got the heat sink under this chip. I'm going to try it that way. Um, I've been doing more of 17 pluses lately, and I've kind of got that down pat because they have so many chips you get to replace. Um, so I'm going to move my camera kind of back over here. I'm using a Yahoo 1000B. I throw this dude on a hot plate and I'm pretty happy with how things are. Uh, I want to get it level so try not to heat all the board but I want it to not move. That guy's pretty good so I'm gonna throw that on. It's about 180 degrees. And I can turn off the source when doing it but then I have to turn it on. Let's see here. You see my boneyard of bad chips here? <laughs> Let's see. So I've got it on the hot plate. I don't have the whole thing on the hot plate. So um, that's kind of what I'm doing there. Oh, hi, Roni. Nice to meet you from Brazil. Thank you. Glad you joined us. I'm just doing some repair of some uh, Bitcoin miner boards which I'm sure you probably saw that. So, um, If you guys have never been to my channel before or you do repair stuff, we do have a Discord channel. I'll put on the, if you go to the channel and just choose another video, you'll see the Discord link. You can join there. Um, if you're not on there, because it's a great community. There's like 30, uh, is it 32, 3,500 people that talk about repair. So that's great. All right, so I'm going to wait. I just sit and wait. I'm going to cook it for a while. So in the meantime, maybe I can work on something else. What can I work on? I've got so much to work on. You wouldn't believe the stack of boards I have. Let's look at one of these boards that I bought that was supposed to be repairable from China. These are quite interesting. I'll turn on my microscope. While that's heating, we'll, we'll go look on the my wonderful S17 Plus boards that uh, they said were repairable. I think this will expand on your video, I hope. I'll, I'll focus it just a second, so you can get it up high. All right, so this is, this is, <laughs> I bought this board. It's an S17 Plus. It's got 65 chips, and they have this, uh, they used some of that silver adhesive because they were having a hard time because they overheated the board and the chip lost its copper top. And uh, then they used a little glue over here. Do you see that glue? Kind of like the black glue for S9s or something like that. So I have this mess because I, I, some of these chips underneath this glue are okay. Some are not. Um, I found out that when I heat them up good with a hot air gun, it it lets me scrape it off but then I ended up losing you know all sorts of resistors and have to redo all those but this this thing was just an absolute mess I don't even think oh there is a good chip on this board it's right hey yeah, there's one where are you camera it's right there I got a couple good chips um, I may rebuild this board from scratch the problem is um, chips are expensive as you guys may know so these are these are tough cases these these things you know you clean this up Let's see here you gotta make a determine is if you can put a heat sink on here or not the s17 plus heat sinks tend to stick better but not always so this has some sort of adhesive that got burned on here what is this an ag that's a that's an in that's not even the right, 
Yeah, it is the right chip. What is that? A C or A? What is that? It's not where they stamp that chip. Is this like an early version? Look, I'll show you what I'm looking at. So, I don't know if this is an AH or not. Let's put this beside there. So it looks like Bitmain went from, well, this might be good in a way. It looks like they went from putting their chip type and serial number all at the bottom to uh, putting them on the sides. They actually changed the design of the chip, which is kind of interesting. What that is, is this, this stuff up here I can solder to. I can usually get solder to stick, and I can usually get solder to stick right here. Um, then get so there is some solder on here, I think, that I could probably... This is stainless steel right here. But that's kind of interesting. So that's an old AG version. Let me see if I can find an AG version. I think this is a new AG. I have an AG. Why, where are our other boards heating up here? Yeah, see my AG, this is a newer AG. Different run and they, they made this part right here shorter, evidently, or tried to squeeze it in. Not sure I like that. So anyway, the way I try to lay something on here is I, I make sure all the adhesive is off. You don't want to scrape too much because you go down to the silicon. And then I just, I, I really clean it with alcohol before I try to do anything with it. I mean, where I've scraped it, it just cleans up. Sometimes you can get solder sticking around the edges like this and you can get them to stick. This board has a lot of problems though, so it's in my... It's in my do it next winter when I can't go outside because it's snowing or something stack. So, all right. Let's have a look here. I think we're hot enough, so I'm going to switch my video sources back. I'm going to take my microscope view and kind of make it smaller, and we're going to go pay attention to the other view. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this camera's kind of hanging precariously, but... Alright, so you probably... I don't know if I can give you a close-up this, because i got to get the heat gun in here, but... The chip I'm cooking is right there. Now, the Russians do it, and some other people, they actually have a mode where you, they have the heat gun underneath, and you just have to heat under the pad. I kind of like that. I'm, I'm thinking about getting a setup like that, but I don't have a setup that way, so... So I'm going to turn my airspeed all the way down and my temperature about 458. And I'm going to get some flux ready, which is right here. I use, oh, you can't even tell on this label here. I use Chip Quick SMD 291. All right. So I use this flat, flat edge. This pushes down good. I don't have to push down real hard, but I do. Um, I've already got flux on here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this chip up until I see the um, leads melting, and the chip should probably settle down. If it doesn't and boils over because I put too much flux, that's a problem. i got to pull it off and try it again, so, you know, we'll see. Um, hi, right-hand Rob, how you doing? <laughs> All right, so let's, um, let me get sure I got my cables out of the way and stuff. I work in a pretty tight area. I need to get a better bench. I have one. I haven't just gotten it. This is a really old heat gun. I've had this for, for, for Chinese equipment standards. I've had this like for a year. So let me let it warm up. It's right here. It's a Yuhua. You see, most of the Yuhua stuff or most of the cheap Chinese stuff, it starts to melt. But I kind of have gone past that. It don't, doesn't melt anymore. It's just been all right. But it just takes a while to warm up. So, all right. So my heat gun's at 470, 457 degrees centigrade. I'm probably going to get in the way of the camera here. Let me see if I can do... What I'm going to do, I'm going to heat this chip up, and I'm going to watch... I, I watch the solder on either side of the pins, of the pads. And the, the heat sink below has already been heated by the uh, thing. So I think an S17 Pro is like a T17. It's better to keep the heat sink on. 
I'm just going to run this dude up until I see that solder melt. Or if the chip moves, I'm kind of out of luck. Because I, I don't, if the chip moves, I really don't try to change it around. Just haven't had great luck at it. So on it goes. When I feel that these guys are melted, I'll actually remove the heat and I'll apply more flux. This chip is probably pretty close to being on, I would think. Yeah. I like how the right side's looking here and the reflection on the light. Just, I'm a little rusty on S17 Pros. I don't do that many. Make sure I don't turn off my mic here. Can turn off my mic? Oh, let's see. I got audio stuff. Okay. All right. So I've, I've heated this for a while. I think some of the solder is melted. The chip is stationary now. I'm just going to apply some flux around the edge of the chip. I'm going to take the heat on up. Looks pretty good. And sometimes you can't see, so just put a drop there. Alright, so this one looks good. I'm gonna. Ah, my hand shook, so I might have changed it. We'll see. Do this without video, I can do 15 of these dudes in a row perfectly, but of course, on video.
Sorry about that. How's that? Sorry. Okay, so the chip, I'm, I'm measuring the chip I just replaced, and it should be in the 10s and 11s why it's hot, 12s when it's cool. Thank you. Um, thank you. I'm a sexy potato. <laughs> I've seen you on Discord before. I've seen your name. So anyway, so I, I think in general, I'm going to believe that I've got this chip on right. Um, the, the diode voltage drops are checking out okay using some of these test points. Yeah, sorry, Sky. Um, working on. You know what happens is I have this stupid mic and I, I I lean forward on my bench and it shuts it off. So um, apologize for that. I'm gonna do another one. I'm just kind of sitting here working. This may end up being a long video, so don't be afraid to ask questions. You guys probably know. I, I recognize some of you from Discord. You probably already know how to do all this. And and trust me, this is not the only way to do stuff. I think everybody has their own methods, and um, this is kind of how I've had to learn. To do it, I'm gonna clean the last job up just a little bit. Um, he's still pretty hot, um, but it's cool enough I can clean it and not pull resistors out. So I'm just gonna try to clean him up a little bit. And then I'm gonna go to the next one. I'm gonna do it again. Like I said, um, when I went to pull a heat sink off, I pulled the whole chip out because someone probably used low temperature solder on the chip base or a high temperature solder on the heat sink, and it just of messed with me pretty bad because now i have six chips out of here that i have to replace um i guess what i can do is i think this guy's good i think i'll go ahead and throw the resistor on i kind of munge that resistors are really hard to put on for me i have a video that i did it with hot air but it takes forever um, so let me find my chip let's let's do the resistor down here all right so let's let's put him on that's going to take my soldering iron I mean, he has pretty good solder balls there, I, I, as far as the, the tinning on that. So let me go find a 0201. So uh, let me see here. See if I can... Let me turn on. I'm going to move some stuff around here. Sorry, guys. So you can see where I'm working. All right. So I'm going to... Get some flux in the area I'm going to work, which is here. Some left over from when I was working. Kind of a little bit too much, but I'm heating up my soldering iron. Let me see, i got to get a resistor down there. So I've got this. These are really hard boogers to get down there the right way. So I've got this. I'm going to try to dump them in there. Hopefully I'll see where... Ah, there he is. Good. So, you know how small those dudes are. I'm really focused in, so... All right, so let me get the soldering iron up to par and then cable for it right. I'm really thinking about running a second soldering iron because I just use them for different things. All right, so I'm going to put a little bit of solder on the tip of my... And I'm going to grab my chip. I'm going to grab the resistor and I'm going to flip him over if I can. And I'm going to grab, this is how I do it now, lately. I'm going to hold them in place. Okay. Now he's probably on both sides, but I, because I heated it up enough, but I'm going to go back and hold them here. Put them on. Okay. If you, do you see me adding pressure there on the microscope? If you do that and the thing's shaking a little bit, if the resistor if the resistor's moving slightly, I probably don't have it soldered well. So you probably need to go back. I'm gonna clean my uh, mess up. Let's see, I just I sop it up with a paper towel. Sorry for my thumb there, but that's what I'm doing. All right. That looks pretty good. Do you see how those are balled up? They actually melted, and when the chip fell down, I still got flux on this a little bit. They actually melted, and when the chip, when the chip pushed down, it pushed the solder out and made a little ball. Typically, you know you've got a pretty good connection on that chip when you do that. I think that's a keeper. I don't have to do that one again. So maybe it's time to move on to the next one. Let's see if I have luck again. Okay, so first. 
That was an experiment, like I said. Jeez, I'm losing all my bin one chips. Hang on just a second. Yeah, they're over here. One, two, three. Hang on just a second. I had stuff on a paper towel, and I had these chips prepared. Just kind of got in my... Four. Five. Got them back. Okay. So... When I started this video, I, I, I work on different boards and there's always, um, <laughs> hey Jeff, how are you? <laughs> Thanks for joining. Um, when I work on different boards, like the T17, I use a hot plate. I'm going to turn off my soldering iron. I use a hot plate and I, um, I, I, I switch whether I try to use a hot plate with the heat sink or a hot plate without the heat sink. So, so on smaller boards, and this is actually a smaller board, it doesn't really have as much copper, um, I'm using the heat sink. Now I didn't know on this board because I really haven't done too much on the S17 Pro. I mean, I kind of bake them and they work after I put them in the oven. But this one I had to fix. Um, so I first tried that chip we just replaced with the heat sink off. In fact, I've prepared this board, not that one necessarily, but I've prepared the board where I pulled the six chips out. Um, I already pulled them off. I, I, I kind of have a, a, a workflow, so I pull all the lower heat sinks off enough to worry. Well, the problem is, is this board is smaller and it needs the heat sink touching the hot plate up here to warm it up enough. The S17 Plus, they're really, really heavy, and I think they have a lot of copper in there. Um, it just works better not to have a heat sink. So I usually try, like if we were doing this chip that was on the other side, this is the back of the board, I would usually try to have, most of the time, I don't really do it all the time, but I usually try to have all around heat sinks, and I sit it on there, and it gets hot enough between all these heat sinks because there's a, uh, you know, I think plates of copper running through it. It's just really a, a heavy board. So on S17, I can't set the chip using the heat with the heat sink on the back because the heat sink's cooling it off too bad and there's too much metal in there cool dissipating the heat. So it's, it kind of depends on uh, on your board. So the T17 and S17 Pro now, that seemed to work pretty good. So before I do the next chip, um, I think what I'll do is I'll give you uh, I'm just going to give you a view of my wick. <laughs> Um, I think I need to put these dudes back on. So let me do that, just so I know. Six of five of these. One, two, three. This guy's there. Four. One more. Five. All right, so I'm going to... It really doesn't matter what temperature I use for, for my... Uh, um, part of the reason, I'm going to clean this off, if you can see this. Um, if you can see this pad, it's just got a little, this was the chip next to it. But actually, the reason I pulled these off was this board was overheating. And I've noticed sometimes when Bitmain built the board, you see the copper underneath there? Is there was never really, there was never really solder making a connection to the rear heat sink. So... I've noticed on some boards when the, when you find a chip that's run hot that they've missed the solder. It never got here. So I was pulling these off. This is the third chip in, which is where the temperature sensor is, and I was going to replace that. So I'm going to do that too. So let me ask a question. Do you ever have to worry when pressing down on the chip that the ground and power pad will bridge to the pin? No, because I just don't have that much solder on there. In fact, right hand Bob, I wick all the solder off the base before I solder a chip. All of it's off. I clean it. So there's not, and, and usually, see these holes right here? Usually the solder will, where, where am I thing? Usually the solder will, look, I mean, some of this, I guess, flowed down when I had it hot, but um, you just don't want that much solder on. You don't need that much solder. Um, I have very little solder on the chip, so you can see, I'll show you a brand new chip I've done. That's how much solder's on the chip. And then if you wick the base of all solder you can, you know, wick up, there's just not that much solder touching it. It's enough to make the good connection. I, I hope that answers your question. I just don't have enough. Do you see how much solder is tinned on the chip's legs? It's not much. 
And, and then when you push the chip down, it pushes out to the side, which makes those balls. So, you, so you're not, you're not, you shouldn't be globbing. I, I mean, I would never, I would never be in, you know, applying, applying this stuff to it. It would be way too much solder. Okay. So I haven't had that problem. Now, now I've worked mainly solely on the 17 series. So I don't know if it's an S9, if that's a problem or not. So. It squishes out. It squishes out, which is nice. You want those balls. You know you did it right if you got those balls, for sure. So that's what you should be seeing. Okay, let me put him back. These guys are worth about, I don't know, what's the going rate for these chips now? I don't know. All right, I'm going to ignore the uh, mic. Ignore the, uh, can't, the uh, microscope. I'm going to throw these dudes on real quick. So I have good backing. Let's see... Be quiet for a while. I count. About forty five. I'm going to put it here because this guy didn't need any extra solder. Um, I do have some. 132 here that I'm going to add. I'm just going to add a little bit of solder to these so they're touching better. This guy needs just a little bit on the edge. So he has some extra solder now that when I put this down it'll make contact and dissipate the heat. So, Alright, let me see here. Um, sometimes, sometimes you want to worry about the temperature you're using for heat sinks. Um, I mean, you literally can melt the solder on the other side. Since I don't have chips in these positions, I'm not too worried. Usually I run my heat sink air about 380, um, not 450, but I'm just doing it now because I don't too lazy to change the temperature. There's no chip on the other side. I'm not going to harm anything. So, My hand's kind of shaky today. I had too much sugar. May not be a great day to work on circuit boards. Sometimes my hands are shaky and I just don't work. so shaky now. Get up there. Give those guys a sec just to cool off. Alright.
Okay. Figure we're good now. Let's uh, work on the next chip. I think what I'll do is go inside now, so I don't have to work outside to inside. We'll we'll go inside to out on both these and in the end. So I'm going to clean this guy up and make sure. I did these pads last night, and they might need a little more work. So let me just clean this guy up. I actually like working on the board after it's been on the top on the burner because just everything solders better, looks better, and does that. So let me see if I can find my finger. There it is. Here's what we're looking at now. So I tinned this last night, but I noticed if you notice right here, something either hit this board or I didn't do a great job. That's all flat. It's almost touching there. I would clean that up. Um, so I'm going to throw some flux on there. I'm going to flip my soldering iron on. I'm just going to, I'll probably mess it all up and have to do it again, but that's okay. I, I, I just want it right. Spend time and prep before you do this. It should be pretty easy. I mean, if you got, if you got everything clean, everything tinned, it's the best you can have it. So let's see here. Let me just touch that guy and straighten him out. I don't know if I, my soldering tip's too big just to hit him. Let me see here. My, uh camera twisted on us. Sorry about that. Let me move around here again. Okay. So you see that flat spot there. Let me see if I can get in and just touch him. The flux should help me. I think that's better right there. I just kind of touched it. Hopefully I'm not seeing stuff. Let's have a look here. Yeah, that's better. All right, so I'm cleaning with alcohol. The board's still warm, so I should be able to lay out. So again, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay out very little flux. Oh, look, this guy's got flux just flowing out of him. I worry about it because I think sometimes this stuff fills up with flux. And then actually when you're trying to put the chip on, it actually boils and pushes the chip off. and and causes it to leave. It's just kind of because the method I use, I suppose, on how to place chips, um, I worry about it. Maybe if you did another method, it wouldn't. But this is the method I've, that's good for me. All right, so I'm just gonna barely lay some flux on these. these. I'm barely pressing the plunger of that. Come on. That's too much. Just wanna get them a little bit wet, not too much. Now you notice I don't put any, I don't put any on, um, I didn't scrape this chip, I probably should, you can see the buildup. It's not too bad. I'm going to take a flat edge knife and just make everything flat, you know, as best I can. I really should take um, a Q-tip and clean that dude off because I got that dude right there. I got him. Okay, so this guy's ready. I've got a chip. And you can look at your chip and make sure he's tinned right. I'm going to throw this on. So, Let's see. Just with your fingers. And I use my. Just center this again. Okay. Again, I keep this pretty precise. Um, I don't move it once it's on the hot plate and once I put a hot air on it, so I kind of make it perfect. It's really dark, it seems like. Okay, all right, so let me look. I look at the reflection. This, this, chip, this chip is actually sideways this way, so I'm gonna try to get him looking better. There we go. It looks more even, you know, but look, see that see that last pin is way up there, and there's a little bit more space here, so I can move him up now. I'll go there. Looks a little better. Look over here now. I don't like the uh, edge of solder sitting there, but I'll take it right now. So that that chip looks like it's kind of on where it's supposed to be, and it looks like it's. On the left hand side, it looks like the chip is more toward the right. I'm going to try to toss it over just a little bit to make it more centered. I 
Yeah, someone's catching, so it's not going to be that easy. Wait a little bit. Now i got to center it the other way. <laughs> Went too far, I think. Let me see. It's probably okay. I try to do this as best I can. Sometimes it moves by itself, and sometimes it just doesn't. There. I just moved it a little bit. I'm going to check my points again. So, top and bottom look okay. This guy looks a little bit deep. If you look at the alignment, you can tell this chip is a little off. See the white line here, where there's space there or not? This guy needs to go up this way, so I still need to work on this. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring this guy up just a touch. I'm holding my tweezers with my fingers so I don't move too much. That looks a little straighter. Um, for the most part, it could be the line is crooked. But um, let's have a look. That guy looks good. That line looks good. It's just this guy seems like he's just a little far down over here. That's why I had it crooked. I'm going to bring him back up. I guess it's just going to be a little crooked. I like that better. Anyway, um, just so you know, I'm centering it on here. I'm not using really the microscope. I have light shining on this way. And these, these pins that I've tinned shine. And so I'm actually looking at a reflection that I can't show you on camera of. They're pretty much centered in there. All right. So let's, uh, let's uh, put this guy on the burner. Oh, wait a minute. I have a spare chip hanging around here. Let me put him back. We're going to burn this one now. Again, I'm going to position in him. I'm only using... Hopefully, I've got the hot plate over here just to steady it. If not, if I could get away with it and it wasn't rocking, actually, that's not rocking. I would actually just do that so it's only here. I try not to heat all the board um, when I have it. So, anyway, turn that guy on and we wait. So, I have another dead period. So, what do we want to look at next? Let's look at this. Uh, is this the one I want to show you? Yeah, I'll show you this one I'm probably clobbered will never fix. This is another S17 Pro that I just, it had a burned. Um, it had a burned. This is the first chip fried. It, it got fried onto the socket. And so I cleaned it up. What's interesting about this chip is I believe that it still has all of the leads, all of the uh, pads, which is kind of unusual for a burn job. Um, for all I know, there might be one more pad, but I think these are the pads. And so what I did is underneath there, it, it just burned out everything. So what I did is I um, took a grinder. I took a grinder and I ground it down. You see it's pretty thin, but um, I'm, I'm eventually gonna try to solder this dude, and give it a chip. I'm not sure it'll be successful. I can't quite stick it down. Maybe I could find some epoxy and hold it down. Not sure. Because once this has been up at the seams here and here, this actually um, ripped the circuit board up into here. Um, anyway, you see where I ground to try to make it pretty much the same height, which is kind of interesting. But I haven't put a chip on there. I, j I just don't run pros that much. So that'll be an interesting... Uh, interesting solder job I think. I, I've got a little Dremel grinder that I use which is kind of weird. And then this this thing also has a one of these. You guys have probably seen this that the chip is generally okay but it's the heat sink is ripped off and it ripped out a chunk and you can see the silicone. This chip will most likely need to be replaced. I've seen them in this bad that they work but it's really hard to get solder in here and the heat sink on to to actually keep it cool so it eventually fails pretty quickly so I got that burn job I'm looking at and we're heating up a, a chip right now um, to do that the other area of these boards that are interesting even the s17s this is the s17 board I've been working here see those nice those nice balls on those chips it's pretty cool that's that's good stuff that's if you can if you can have your chips look like that you know you're doing good so um, I can't say that they're always that way 
but I've noticed um, I've noticed that so I'm going to show you chip number one so chip number one if I can find my fingers right here and it's I bought these boards they were the ones that people couldn't fix so they've, they've got a lot of problems you can see the silicone this is ripped out but there is a test point right there you can see on the lower part of the screen um, if you test the if you test the diode I've, I've had two boards that I fixed and every voltage was good I went through and made sure every resistor was right it took a long time there's 65 chips on this thing um, and then sometimes it would say no all ASICs found and then sometimes it would say zero ASICs found I just never could get it down so I mean I've been I've been on this one board you know part-time you know for I, I just pick it up and work on it for a while and say why can't I get it to settle down I baked it I put it in the oven and baked it but it still was sometimes it would work sometimes it's not and and the voltage would be okay but it turns out this middle RO voltage this is the line that comes backwards through the board and then goes to the circuit board I, I tested the diode resistance I call it or the diode voltage drop on this and it was um, supposed to be about 0.5 if you have a working board and indeed sometimes I would measure this at 0.5 what I did is I would get the board to start failing and then I measured the diode resistance on on this this first domain this is the beginning of the first domain and, I, and lo and behold it wasn't 0.5 it was 0.1 and I said oh man I have a bad chip or resistor or something why is it doing that so you know of course I study all the chips first because that's where I go to first that seems to be the part that runs hot and it wasn't it so I said well not all these chips seem to be okay so I started tracing this wire back all the way back and it turns out this wire gets to this CTIF chip CT1F chip and this CT1F chip is kind of interesting um, it takes a signal two signals um, if I'm not mistaken a signal can run through here and run through here these two paths basically go to the control board through the connector right here. Um, these two paths go to the board. So you've got something like, um, I want to say 3.2 volts over here, but this is RO, so it's 1.8 volts. So this chip lets you communicate binary, the I to C communications. There, there's binary signals being sent back. It, it sends saying, hey, you know, uh, what chip number are you? And the chip answers and, and on the clock beat. And this translates that signal and retains the binary message through different voltages. But it turns out if you measure here to the ground of the first chip, you should get about 0 0.5, 0 0.5 in the diode resistance. And I was getting 0 0.1. So I found out after tracing, see this appears out of the back side of the board right here. I think it appears right there. I can't remember, it's either right there right here I can't quite remember this resistor it goes through this resistor out of this capacitor on it's kind of weird this guy's grounded because he's cleaning up the signal and this guy's a 33 ohm resistor and then it goes to the other side of the board then it comes back to this side of the board and then it goes down there it's kind of hard to find but um it turns out this guy was kind of blinking on and off on me and so I replaced him I happen to have some I've, I've kind of slowly invested in chips I had some and I replaced it and I got two two of my hard to fix boards were that problem and I'd never that they were so trans and it was really hard to do. All right. Given that, guess what? Our board's hot. Let's put the chip on. Okay. That's just side stuff. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna get my flat nose pliers. I'm gonna get my flux ready. I'm gonna make sure my temperatures set right and that wasn't and my fan is turned all the way down then I'm gonna go I'm move the camera out of the way um, I'm going to heat that chip up until I see the pads start to melt and then I'll take the heat off Hopefully I don't turn my mic off again I'll take the heat off and then I'll put flux on then I'll reapply heat again that's how I've learned how to do it so we're warming that baby. It should be nice and warm because it's sitting at 180 degrees centigrade on that hot plate. So should have gotten all the way there. And the reason the hot plate is so nice is if you were to just do this on a cold chip, it would expand too fast and, and chip might crack and, and kind of, I call it blow up, but it doesn't really blow up, but it 
pops. So having it already this warm, just heating it up a little more to get the solder melted doesn't seem to uh, doesn't seem to hurt it. I mean, I'm sitting here blowing 456 degrees centigrade air on it for quite a while. I got to get that board up to that temperature. I'm going to move the light just a little bit because I used the reflection on those pins a little bit. Okay. Hopefully I didn't move you off. I moved you a little bit off vision, but hang on just a sec. I'm just heating it up. I move it back just a touch. Okay. All right. Still working it. Now, if I would have put too much flux on those pins, it would have seeped down to the pad and then maybe start to boil, and it would actually shove the ship chip up and off where I've placed it. So I don't like doing that. I, I don't use that much flux. Okay, things are looking pretty good here. Nobody's moving. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull the heat off. I'm going to throw some flux down. Oh no, that's not good. That's a catastrophe. That's okay, it didn't hit the chip. Just a second. Ooh, I got flux all over the place now. For some reason, this uh, took the top off. All right, so let's get back the heat. I'll throw some flux around that dude. It didn't hit the chip, so that's good. I don't think so. I'm going to heat this guy back up. He had a little bit too long to cool off, but we'll get him back up. It's pretty warm still. Just get those pins, and, and I'm hoping the flux you know flows under it might have uh, messed me up a little bit okay so those those pins are kind of like twinkling like snowflakes so I'm gonna hold the chip down apply a little pressure not a lot just some and then take the heat off yeah. I blow on it just to hurry up this I take that off all right so I'm going to turn the heat off. I'm going to bring the thing back and let's have a look at what we did here. I got flux all over my hands. That's kind of a drag. All right, let's pull it back over. and We'll take a look at uh, what I did in the, mi in the microscope. See if it moved that much. Okay, that looks good. However, the other side, if you think about it, let me go down closer. I'll show you what I'm talking I'm, I'm a little worried about this. Like if you look at that, I guess it's a ball. So these look more like the still the, the pads going out. I probably got it okay. We're going to measure it. But um, I'm not going to do anything with this chip. It's in. It's probably good. We're going to measure the resistances right now and just check it. But um, I can't check that right side because the next chip over is missing, but I can check the left side. The left side looks good. The right side, eh, probably all right, at least all through there. Um, to remedy this, I could throw it back on there, heat it again, and just apply a little more pressure on this lower hand. I'm going to wait. I can always do that. I have a feeling I had the thing hot enough, though. It's really hard to tell because I had the light. My light is holding the camera, and I couldn't get it at the right place. But let's... um. Let's do some measurement of this. Like I said, I can't really measure the the one to the right because there's no chip connected. When I put that other chip in there, it'll be there. All right, so I'm measuring the diode voltage drop, and I'm going to go find these test points that I think that will give me a kind of a feeling of how I did. And there's one. That looks good. These would be 12 if it was cold. It might be. That's the middle one. So that's RO. This is the other one on the other side. So those look good. If I do it on this one, they're going to be really high because there's no chip. But they look in general like they would probably be okay. So I'm probably okay. But when I showed you... That's not a test point. When I showed you those parts where the legs were, those are actually like the power supplies to the chips that run along the sides. So um, we'll have to see. But I but I, I placed this chip. I know what condition it is. So I'm just a little worried about that. Okay? Looks like they melted, but maybe not. How's my resistors? Did I lose a resistor? There's only one resistor coming out of here. And everybody else stayed the same. All right, so there's chip number two on this board. 
Maybe I'll do one more. I don't know. Probably getting old if you're just watching the video and I'm doing chip after chip, but I had to do this with this board. All right, board's nice and hot. Let's move over to, let me bring this up a little bit. Let me clean this guy up. He's sitting around all our hot work, so I'm gonna clean him up. Here we go again. All right. Again, I you, in the very beginning of this video, I had to retin the one up above it. So, so this is next. This is the guy we just placed. This is next to the guy, and then it's at the end of the domain and wraps around. So, I should be able to test two other chips once I get this guy in place and make sure he did all right. These guys look tinned all right. This guy looks like it might have little too much solder on it up here sometimes doesn't that that actually is a nice tin job for the one that's grounded there these guys look pretty good i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to scrape this okay let's get all the residue off because it's been sitting all night since i worked last night on it See the green stuff i don't know what that is it's some oxidation that's happening so i just like to get some of that off before I throw a chip. So I have this flat bladed exacto that it, you know, if a piece of solder was sticking up, you wouldn't want it sticking up, stopping your chip from contacting. So I got a bunch of solder at the end of that dude. Okay. All right. Let me wipe that down. For those of you who may have joined, you feel free to ask questions if you want. Geez, look at that oxidation. It already came back. Isn't that crazy? I wonder what that is. It's better if I scrape it off. Maybe the alcohol. It's only 99%. I just like to see solder, not green. It's like a copper oxidation because it's green. That's crazy. Okay, here we go. We're going to place another chip on this. So I'm going to lightly put flux here and get it to come out. That's good. That's all I put it on. Let's see, I got a new chip here. Put him on there. so dark it just always does it's daytime here so all right we place that guy fairly good maybe down a little too low bring him up straight up ouch Kind of hard to tell with that flux there sometimes. That looks pretty straight across there. Okay, I'm feeling all right. I'm looking at the reflection of this chip on the pins and it looks, looks like it's fairly centered. So it's time to bake them. All right, I'd love to wash my hands. because they're all sticky. All right, so we have to wait now for that to heat up. What's going on right now? The chip we're working on is right there. That guy right there. I still have this vacant, this vacant. So, I, so this will be my third chip I placed. I've got three more to go on this board. And if you're just catching up with me, the reason I have to replace three chips is because I went to take the heat sink off of one and somebody used the wrong solder. They put a low melting solder against when they used to solder the chip on because maybe it's easier to work with. 
but when you heat up the heat sink to take it off to make sure it's connected right to the chip for cooling, it uh, pulls the chip out. And so I had six chips do that, which was really disappointing last night. And I was out of chips, so so I um I do about ten or fifteen chips at a time. So if you look in the, let me get the. Uh, I do about 10 or 15 of these dudes. I do use used chips as much as I can. So I'll recondition. This is one of my reconditioned used chips. So it has a little bit more solder on it, but you can see I um, it already had solder on it, but I clean it off. I have a video where I recondition these. The Russian guys didn't like this because um, they have a little bit different set. I like it. Um, they have a They have a heat gun pointing straight up. And they're able, I don't have that, so I have to hold my heat gun. But what they do is they hold the chip and the tweezers, heat up the chip, and then go wipe it off on a paper towel, and it's like instant clean. I basically have to put mine in a clamp. I've got this clamp, and I clamp them, a vise. And then I um, use flux and a, and a wick, and I clean them off. But at least I know they're, they're clean like I want them to be. So um, I do that. So anyway... I bought these chips off of eBay quite some time ago for about nine bucks a piece. I bought 200 of them and I've still got a supply. I always prefer to use used, but I just haven't parted with any of my boards that have burn places because I think I'm going to fix them. Um, so <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, really short on um, chips, so I tapped into my new stock here, which is easier because you never wonder. Um, I tested these. When I, when I use a used chip, there's a couple tests I do on them. One is um, I check the resistance from the, from the ground pad to the top of the chip. And that typically should be under about 150 ohms. If it's really high, your chip's no good. And then I run 1.42 voltage here and I watch the draw on my power supply. And it needs to do a gradual draw that's fairly quick but not really fast. Some chips, they'll shoot up to to huge amounts of draw of current. Some will not draw at all and be really slow. I kind of reject those and, and the normal chips will just have a steady increase in draw and amperage and that's how I test these chips. Um, so I, I get rid of a lot just because yeah just because so anyway we're still heating The board was already kind of hot, so I don't have to heat as much. It's probably okay to do, but let's let's wait just a few more minutes. So that resistor I put on was a 33 ohm 0201. I got this roll. I think I bought a thousand of them. I mean, the microscope makes them look real big. But they're really tiny. I mean, if you look at my finger size, they're pretty tiny, but pretty cool. So I just bought a stock. I bought these from Mouse, or you can buy them from anywhere. Sometimes on eBay, you can buy whole rolls for like 10,000 resistors for 20 bucks. Just a minute or two, and we'll run it again. I want that get to get nice and warm. I'm going to go look at it, make sure it's... Yeah, so it's really centered nicely. Hopefully um, with with not a large amount of flux. I think we can go ahead and put this guy on. So I get my tweezer and my flux ready. And hopefully my flux needle won't... Well, actually I want to clean that up. Because that's just going to be a big mess. All right, here we go. We got one on low. I'm running about 456 degrees centigrade. Here we go. Now I'm looking at the reflection actually off the light. The, the pins shine up at me and I can really see what they're doing for the most part. Let me see. I'll back this up just a touch. Maybe you can see it. Yeah. 
so that'll help me see the reflections. Here we go. Hopefully, and if the chip moves, I just kind of start over. I clean off the pad, use a different chip. This it's got to get the pads, the chip, the board, the heat sink. Everybody has to get hot. It's like my audio shut off because I leaned on it. But it should be back on now. Sometimes you can just see the chip just plop down and settle in. That's really good news. Sometimes you just know that the tinning on the chip has melted with the tinning on the pins and you're in good shape. And at that point, I know when the chip's not going to move, I go ahead and apply more flux. So I think we're in good now. So I just put flux around the outside of the chip and give it some more. Probably too much flux, but just the way I do it. And I heat a little longer because the flux cools it off. And then um, I can't necessarily see in the daylight because I'm in the daytime. Sometimes I drop another. You want to see those uh, those those pin the. You want to see those legs are dancing. So this chip was already sitting down really solid. So this should be a good solder job. He's already. I think we're good. So I'll pull off the heat. All right, let's take a look at what we did. Let's go look. I am this is it right there. That's it. So again, on that right side of the chip, I'm a little iffy. They were dancing. But this guy looks like he has good balls. Nice, nice solder job on the left side. I may have to go touch the right side up. We'll look at its resistance. I think I can check it. So He just doesn't look like he melted as much on that side, you see. You still see kind of definition, the tinning on the pad. Looks like the chip might have been over to left. So we'll see. We'll measure it. Let me pull out of the way. Let's do that measurement now. All right. So you can kind of see that. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is measure off to the right of the chip we replaced last time. Still really good. Still really good. So, so, so these these guys in between the two chips. Let me see. You can't really see where I'm measuring. I'm measuring, see if I can do this, I'm measuring the chip, so so we set this chip just a second ago, I just put this one on, I couldn't measure in between because if there's no chip there I get bad values, so I put it on, and now I'm getting good values, on hot it shouldn't be 1.2, it's actually 1.0, and then now I've got this ending chip, this ending chip right here, wraps up there so I should be able to to test that so um, let me see if I can bring this down a little bit got the light shining on it so I'm gonna see if I can find some places to touch that up it would be here Let's see here that looks good should be in the tins because it's still hot that should be in the tins so I think I got yeah 400 so I think these last three chips we've done um, I've got good, really, really good possibility of working. Unless I, I screwed up on the edges. I'm only testing the data lines right now. Unless I screwed up on the edges and they're not getting power. And I can test that on a voltage test. I think these three chips we did are looking pretty good. Okay?
So um, I think I will end the session today. I've got three more to do. And I'll do those, but if you've seen it three times, you've probably seen it enough for the day. So thank you for watching. Um, in the comments of this live video is a link to a Discord channel where there's over 3,000 people talking about repairing these boards. You can pick up a lot of important information. And also, if you, the first time you saw this, uh, subscribe to my channel. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm in the YouTube algorithm because I don't make videos as often as I used to, but there's, you know, how, how often can I show this? Um, but I do like doing live sessions and answering.